Hello girls and boys, welcome to another Elementor Tips and Tricks video clips tutorial. If you wonder what that breakout of images means, well, simply put together, it occurs when the image busts out of the parent container or when you intentionally make it bleed over the parent element boundaries, any side, be it top, right, bottom or left hand side. And by doing so, the image usually occupies the territory of another element. Why is that quote unquote effect used for? I guess the main purpose is to make your design more appealing, to make an eye-catching section or a layout, or anything else you can think of. Also there's a chance that you have no other option in a design to layout process but to make images break out the parent container. That might be the case, the usage case as well. Anyhow, this is something that can be done in Elementor Pro very easy. I have a ready-made example on a screen right now that I'm about to replicate and show you step by step how it was done. Of course, everything must be okay with regards to responsiveness. I'm also going to pay your attention to any possible drawback or an issue and of course let you know how to fix it up properly and maybe throw in some useful trick here and there. So let's do it. You can see two columns here and each column has a different background color. That kind of setup will make things more obvious, I guess. If you take a look at the car, you can see it being parked on a green column as well. Just a little bit, but it's obvious that the car doesn't belong to the yellow column only, okay? So that's the whole point. Of course, the picture of a car must have a transparent background, otherwise we would be dealing with an image that actually overlaps the green column. First of all, I'll create new section atop of existing one. So I'm going to click that plus icon and then add new section with two columns. I don't want my new section to look like it's stuck between page top and the existing example. So I'll add some margin to top and bottom. Something like 100 pixels to top and bottom. Let's remove columns gap too. I'm going to select layout tab and simply set columns gap to no gap. We don't need any gaps. Because I'm not about to create my text column from scratch, I'll copy paste or duplicate existing one. It's going to be much quicker that way. So right mouse click on a column icon, copy. Now right mouse click on the existing column icon and paste. As you can see all of the widgets are being copied as well. And let's remove an extra column, right mouse click, delete. You probably noticed that I'm using navigator to select the target column but I'm gonna leave that part for later. It does require a bit of explanation and we'll get back to, to it very soon. Let's handle the left hand side column first. Before I add the, the photo of, of a car, I would like to explain how exactly I'm planning to take control over positioning, okay? Because I need to be able to move the car image left and right, top and bottom, over the column boundaries. And you definitely need to know how things work. So, I'm sure you already have seen the background overlay panel in Elementor. That very panel is available to all sections and columns. What's interesting about that very panel is the fact that it's only visible or available if you declare the background type at first place. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to expand the background panel of my existing example that I'm about to replicate. And if I unset the background type, background overlay panel disappears. If I turn it on again, things are back to normal, okay? But the most important fact about the background overlay is the position. Background overlay is absolutely position element, which means we can move it around by using a simple CSS positioning properties, like top, right, bottom and left. Likewise, we can also scale it up and down if needed. Of course, it's absolutely position in relation to the parent element, which can either be a section or the column. By the default, it will always take 100% of both width and height of the parent element and the initial position will always be the top left corner of the parent element. Now that we know everything about the background overlay, we can make that dumb best work for us. So the very first thing I gotta do is to activate the background of the car image housing column. Highlight the column, select style tab, expand background panel and choose the classic background type. That's gonna be enough. Now I have the background overlay panel ready to be harnessed, so to speak. So the background type will be classic. We don't need any opacity, to, so the value should be 1 
which is the equivalent of 100%. And I'm going to add the image of a car from the media library, that beautiful Mercedes Benz. So the position is going to be center center, repeat, no repeat, and size contain. It's because the image should fit the container either by width or height, whichever of these two is reached first. That's how contain property works like. Yeah, you can't see the car yet because our column is empty and if there's no renderable content inside the column, the background will not be visible. Easy to fix, just drag and drop the spacer widget. In this case, spacer will become our dummy content. It's transparent, it won't do any harm, but rather force browsers to render the column background. And I'm gonna set its height to 10 pixels. That's just okay. Let's now add the yellow background as well because the car image is transparent. So this is going to be a hexadecimal value of ETB 500. And now it's time for a little trick, the real one. How to make both backgrounds, yellow and green, stretch full screen. How to fill up the gaps on both sides with corresponding colors. So here it is. I'm gonna highlight the section first. Select Style tab, Background panel. Background type has to be gradient this time. First color is going to be our yellow, which is EDB 500. Location should be 50, it's actually 50%. And the second color is our green color, the color of the second column, whose hexadecimal value is 00513E. Location has to be 50% likewise. And finally the angle, the angle must be 90 degrees. And there it is, that's how you make the color stretch full size. What's left to be done is to park our Mercedes nose a little bit over the yellow column border. As you probably guess, we'll need some help from good old CSS. So highlight the yellow column, if not already highlighted, open advanced tab, expand custom CSS panel. Now the question, how do I refer my background overlay element in case I need to add some custom CSS to it? In Elementor everything is well organized and quite intuitive, including the class name of a certain element or a widget, and so is with the background overlay. So the class name is simply Elementor Background Overlay. That's why I'm going to type in the following. I'm going to start with selector, of course, because the keyword selector refers to the currently selected element, which is the column. Our target element, background overlay, is the child element of the column. So I'm going to type in the following. Selector, Elementor, Background, Overlay, Open, Close, a pair of curly brackets. And I'm going to type in, inside the brackets, with property, column, 115%. Okay, as you can see, the part of the car that's supposed to be crossing the yellow column border is now covered. Why? It's because the green column is having the higher stack in order, also known as Z-index. Now, in order to assign the higher Z-index to my yellow column and make the car now show up, I'll expand Advanced Panel and simply enter 1 into the Z-index input field. 1 is enough in this case. I could enter 5 or 55 it won't make any difference. If you wonder why I used 115% to actually increase the background overlay width for 15%, instead of using a left CSS property and actually move the background overlay for 15% to the right hand side, well, that's actually my personal preference or a choice. Both methods work fine, but the question is which one scores a better visual experience? I'm going to show you what I mean. So here's how the car image looks like when I use left property, 15%, instead of width, 115%. Okay? So compare the existing example and the work in progress. If I increase width of the element for 15% as I did initially, it'll keep the top left position and in the same time achieve expected result. If I just move it to the right hand side for 15%, it'll lose original position and of course score expected result as well. 
Anyhow, I'll rather manipulate with in this case. You might decide differently. It's up to you. Let's check responsiveness. Responsive mode, tablet, everything looks fine. Now the mobile. As usually, and due to the columns collapse, things do not look right anymore. There's a horizontal scroller triggered by the background overlay width of 115%. Let me hide the existing example temporary that will make the situation much clearer. Okay, open the navigator and click on that eye icon next to the target section. Okay, it's quite obvious now that the problem is caused by the work in progress, so let's fix it up for mobile devices. Highlight the car image column first, open advanced tab, custom CSS panel. So, how to make the width of the background overlay element back to 100% for mobile devices only. By using Media Query, of course. As you know, Media Query is used to define or redefine the target element CSS rules for a given breakpoint or a screen resolution. So here it is. Here's how the mobile breakpoint is triggered. I'm going to type in Add Media, open close a pair of normal brackets, followed by the pair of curly brackets for later usage and then I'm going to enter max width column 767 pixels inside of the pair of normal brackets that's how mobile devices breakpoint is triggered and I'll just copy paste my my previous chunk of CSS code and I'm going to replace width of 115 with a width of 100% Alright, horizontal scroller removed and I just have to adjust the size of the car image obviously. Currently the image is as tall as the spacer that we have added to mimic the content and make the column background actually renderable. I can easily adjust the size by adding some padding to the yellow column. So I'm gonna expand advanced panel, unlink padding values, select percentage unit and I'm gonna add like 20% or 25% of padding to both top and bottom. And there it is. And finally, I'm going to make the car image sit inside the green column a little bit, just to make a similar breakout effect when columns collapse for mobile devices. Consistency matters when speaking of design. So I'll simply move it downward for 30%. And here's how I, how I do that. I'm gonna type in top property column and 30%. Yeah, that's it. It all looks right now. Let's switch the view back to desktop. As I have promised at the beginning, I'll tell you why I'm using the navigator. Because of the fact that the background overlay element breaks out its parent container, the column, and because the parent container must use the higher stacking order or Z index to make its child element fully visible, the green column icon is not accessible anymore. You see? It's actually hidden by the background overlay element. The navigator helps me to select or highlight the green column. That's why navigator. And there's no other workaround when dealing with so-called column breakouts. All right, I hope you got a point. I hope that everything I did here in this tutorial makes sense. I gave my best to make things as clear as possible. If you know how to move the background overlay element over the, the right-hand side border, you'll know how to move it in any other direction. All you need is a little bit of practice. And this is it for today. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumb up, comment, share, spread the word. Anything you do will be fine. And if you do so, I'll make more Elementor Tips and Tricks videos. Stay tuned. Thanks for your support.